Hello everyone and welcome to a sunny afternoon here in Fort Myers to Heyman Stadium at CenturyLink Sports Complex, spring training home of the Minnesota Twins and the year-round home of the Fort Myers Miracle. You are watching the FHSA Class 9A Baseball Semifinals on the NFH Network. And alongside Jason Alexander, I'm your host, Doug Pugh. Our one o'clock game is the second of the two Class 9A Semifinals featuring the Wolves of Timber Creek on the southeast side of Orlando with a record of 25 and five. And the Barracudas of Coral Park out of Miami with a record of 18 and 10, with the winner facing Sanford Seminole, who were 12-4 winners in our first semifinal game. To get the table set for you this afternoon's action, here are your starting lineups. First, starting with the visitors on the scoreboard from Timber Creek. Batting leadoff, Ramsey's Cordova at shortstop. Batting second is Cole Nelson, designated hitter. In the third spot, Parker Wood, the center fielder. Batting cleanup, Andrew Spoljar is at first base. Jake Johnson in left field, batting fifth. Ethan Hawkins batting sixth as the catcher. Batting seventh, Shady Farah in right field. Batting eighth is Alexander Fenwick in third base. And batting ninth is Gabriel Cruz. The defense for the Barracudas from left to right. Dylan Boyd, Ryan Scary, Manny Duran from left to right. Across the diamond, Thomas Acevedo at third. Michael Ogden at short, Brent Coscuela. At second base, first base, Sean Londono. Behind the dish, Sebastian Baza Jimenez. And on the bump for the Barracudas, Patrick Roth. And Roth. 48 and two thirds innings work this season. 36 strikeouts to 10 walks. Starts off Cordova, and Cordova laces a single into left field on the first pitch. Roth, 2.73 ERA, 2-1 record. Just a save on the season. Roth's first pitch, a grapefruit over the meaty part of the strike zone. Cordova able to hit a sharp line of the left field and start this semifinal off. Now to bring up the West Virginia Wesleyan commit, Cole Nelson. He'll bunt that down the third baseline, foul. Timber Creek making their third straight appearance. They were state champs in 2017, 2018. Lost in the finals last year to Jupiter and currently playing in the state final four this year. 2015, they lost in the semis as well. So a dynastic program coming from the southeast side, the Avalon Park area. Bunted right back to the pitcher. He'll be up with it to first, and that will get the runner over. Nice job by Roth to check the runner at second. Was able to know exactly how much time he had. Gets the runner at first. Parker Wood will now come up. Team captain, team MVP, and offensive player of the year. Leads the team in batting average. 385, 35 hits, 25 runs scored, 17 RBI, and second with 14 stolen bases. Only committed two errors all season as well. Wolves on a 17-game winning streak. And you'd have to go back in the records of Orlando prep baseball history six, seven decades to find a team with this kind of run in them. School opened in 2001. There he goes. And no throw down. Wood now facing a one and two count. Cordova exploiting the very deliberate and delayed pitching. Motion of Roth. Left-hander deals and it will be tapped over to the third base side. Acevedo up with it. And first baseman Sean Londono cannot come up with it. Let's see what they rule it. Probably gonna be an error and it sure is. Tough play for Acevedo. Had to look the brunner at third base on a slow roller and didn't have enough on a throw 
to punch out Wood. So this will bring up Spoyer, Andrew Spoyer. Two-way player, 293 average. Only struck out 12 times. He's also the man we will most likely see if, and that's a big if, Timber Creek were to make it to the state title game. Count will run even to Spoyer at one and one. Nice stop there by Baza Jimenez. The wind kind of lazily flying out to the left corner. Wind was a little more out of the southeast in the first game. It's a little more southerly right now. And it takes off. Off goes Wood, who has 14, now 15 stolen bases on the season. Barracudas from the Miami area. If you know it well enough. A little south of Kendall. Technically Richmond Heights. Beautiful part of town over there and swing and a miss for Spoyer and the count will now run full at three and two. Groth, a breaking ball pitcher, has a lot of movement on every pitch. And nice pitch by Roth to get Spoyer swinging. That ball dropped six inches. So now Jake Johnson. Takes the first pitch inside. Jimenez will have to be active at that backstop. Managing Roth, a breaking ball pitcher who has already thrown multiple balls in the dirt. Thought I recognized this young man's name. He is the starting quarterback for the Wolves. And how about this? Legally blind in his left eye. The lead eye towards the pitcher. Well, when you only hit with one eye, you can see the ball very well, but it messes with your depth perception. So something to make a note of. And that one chopped to the shortstop. Ogden up with it. Nice. Over, and that will do it for the Wolves. In the top half of the first, nothing doing for Timber Creek. Just one hit. We'll come up with Coral Reef coming up in the bottom of the first in this 9A semifinal. We'll be right back after this quick break on the NFHS Network. NFHS Learning Center is the leader in online education for the interscholastic community. At NFHSLearn.com, you can find over 60 courses for coaches, administrators, officials, parents, students, and performing arts programs, including over 25 free courses such as concussion in sports, heat illness prevention, sudden cardiac arrest, and protecting students from abuse. For more information, visit the NFHS Learning Center. There you see the Coral Reef dugout, the home team on the scoreboard. Let's get you set up with their batting lineup in the bottom of the first. Leading off, Sebastian Baza Jimenez at catching spot. Brent Cosguela is at second base, batting third. Michael Ogden at short. Batting cleanup, Sean Perez is the designated hitter. In the five hole, Ryan Scary in center field. Thomas Acevedo batting sixth. Manny Duran 
batting seventh. Londono batting eighth, and Dylan Boyd, the nine hitter, in left. The defense behind Ditton Coquit. For the Wolves, Jake Johnson in left, Parker Wood in center, Shady Fair in right. Fenwick at third, Cordova at short, Cruz at second, Spoyer at first. Behind the dish is Ethan Hawkins. And as we mentioned, Denton Coquit is your starting pitcher for the Wolves. 8-0 record on the season, .65 ERA, five saves in 19 appearances. 53 and two-thirds innings of work, 32 Ks to just three walks. Has given up a home run. Only five earned runs on the season, 38 hits as well. Opponents hitting just 188 against him. He's only hit three or two batters as well. So, Denton Coquit, and he gives up a line shot to left field. Johnson is up underneath, though, and Baza Jimenez gives one a ride, but it's a long out. Johnson played it well was able to make a good read upon contact, still battling the afternoon sun. Brent Coscuela now up to bat. Eastern Connecticut commit, four-year starter on the varsity, three-year team captain. He was a 2016 Rookie of the Year and honorable mention by the Miami Herald. Silver Slugger Award in 2018, third Team All-Dade second baseman in 2018. He was first team All-Dade County this year. And he's quickly behind, 0-2. Coquit, as well as Roth, both have dynamic breaking ball action. Again, Hawkins will have to have his work cut out for him at that backstop playing defense. And he goes down, quickly does Coscuela. And it's quickly two down for the Wolves. Coquit dealing early. And takes that pitch for a strike, does Ogden. 0 and 1 now. Two down for the Kudas in the bottom of the first. It's the first time in school history that they have reached any of this. It was their first time as district champs, first time as regional champs. School opened in 1997. And they say he goes around, does home plate umpire Chris Lee. He's behind the dish representing the Bay Area officials from Panama City. Denver Dangerfield at third and Nate Starr at first. And good job of staying alive does Ogden. Count will remain at 0-2 with two outs. Cole quit pitching from the stretch, although no runners on base. The pitch is lined in the center field. Parker Wood is out there, and that will do it for the Barracudas in the bottom of the first. We've played one full inning here in Fort Myers. No score. We'll be right back after this quick word. You're watching the 9A semifinals on the NFHS Network. This championship event is brought to you by Hospital for Special Surgery. Thousands of young athletes have their season ended by ACL injuries. Learn how to keep them safe with our ACL injury prevention course at nfhslearn.com slash courses. All right, this is Adam, take two. What? I guess. <laughs> I go like this. <laughs> The best part about playing football in Texas has to be the reaction from the community. I want to encourage others to play volleyball or choir because you get to experience new things and new stuff that you've never done before. My reason why is passion. My reason why is pride. It's 
the six, seven, and eight hitters do up for the Wolves here in the top half of the second. Leading off for the Wolves will be Ethan Hawkins headed to King University. Small little Presbyterian school up in Bristol, Tennessee. That city is actually split half down the middle between Virginia and Tennessee. It's a unique little place. In fact, Timber Creek with a higher enrollment at their high school than the university that Hawkins will be attending. Not unlike you and I did with Stetson. So it's a unique little situation that you find yourself in. He should do just fine up there. Hawkins, one of the leaders of this team. And hitting 237 of the year with 10 RBI. He mans the, the situation behind the dish for the Wolves and does a great job doing it. He yanks that one foul. Look out, third base coach. Against Roth, these Wolf batters will have to be extremely patient, keep their weight and hands back. And you have to pick up the spin out of his pitching as early as possible. Says that Roth is a Cy Young recipient. State of Florida does not officially give out a Cy Young award, but there are several premier invitational tournaments and a few other publications that give out something very similar. All of it leading to the fact that Roth is in fact a very good pitcher. He misses low and inside that time though and will give Hawkins the free pass. Good discipline at the plate by Hawkins. Roth has a variety of breaking balls. Throws one that appears to be almost very screwball-like. It'll be Shoddy Farah up to bat. Spelled Shady, but it's Shoddy. Shoddy. And almost at first. Nice pickoff attempt from the left-hander. Hawkins leaning to that second base side. Pitch to Farah is outside. Farah hitting 298 on the season. Two doubles, or three doubles, two triples, and a home run. 14 RBI on the season. A bulk. And they're going to get Roth with the bulk. And that will send Hawkins down to second base. Yeah, his knee was in between. Either got to come to first or home. Anything in between is a bulk. Wait for Jimenez. Baza Jimenez, Sebastian Jimenez, 6'3", 197, the catcher for Coral Reef, headed to FIU. He is the field general and the leader of this Barracuda Ball Club. And Jimenez motioning for Londona, the first baseman, to creep in a little bit farther. And breaking pitch misses down low for ball two. Timber Creek in their third consecutive Final Four appearance. They won it all in 2017. Lost a heartbreaker to Jupiter last season. And are in the finals, that is, and are right back here again. Teams can create sustainability through effective use of the younger players. 
with a next man up mentality. Yeah, Roth finds the strike zone on that one. And the count will move to three and one. This big cut there by Farah is missed. And the count will now run full. The runner on second, nobody out. And that is a rope down the left field line. And coming around is Hawkins. He will score standing up. And also standing up with a double. And an RBI is Shadi Farah. Nice piece of hitting by Farah. Ball on the inside part of the plate was able to get out front and pull it up that third baseline. Pitch comes inside. Great work at the top foot by Farah, able to step to the third base, open up, good hip action, pivot, and pull hit. So we'll run home here for the Wolves in the top half of the first, and Jimenez trying to get to that one just a bit far outside his reach. And the count will go to 0-1 for the third baseman, Alexander Fenwick. Fenwick hitting 278 on the season. Just a sophomore. And he pulls it back, and the count will even up at 1-1. One one. And he gets the bunt down that time, but it is foul. And now the count will go to 1-2. We'll see what they do with Fenwick. How they decide to use him now with two strikes. You don't want to bunt your way out of an at-bat here. Swinging away and taking. Count even at two and two. And that one just happens to find Ross glove. He didn't really know much about it, folks. And that is one of the niftier double plays that you will see. In baseball, we talk about eyes, hands, and feet. But what brings those things together is coordination. Great coordination there by Roth. Presence of mind to catch that ball and deliver a strike to second base for the atypical 1-5, excuse me, 1-6 double play. And a swing and a miss on the big cut by Gabriel Cruz. Cruz, the second baseman. And hits a little nubbler that'll roll foul. We've seen a number of swinging bunts that have turned into infield singles. Cruz with 11 RBI on the season. The ninth hitter in the lineup. Wolves have already completed. And we are an inning and two thirds through the way. And that goes deep into the short. Ogden up with it. Wonderful the split defense. by Londono. And we're going to get a bit of an argument here. But a beautiful defensive play to keep just one run across for Timber Creek in the top half of the second. 
Coral Reef coming up. It'll be four, five, and six hitters for the Barracudas when we return on the NFHS Network. This event is brought to you by Champion. Since 1919, Champion has created the durable, authentic sportswear you need to conquer your goals. As the official uniform and apparel provider for the NFHS, Champion helps athletes at every level make their mark, the mark of a champion. View our apparel today at champion.com. Welcome you back inside Hammond Stadium alongside Jason Alexander. I'm Doug Pugh getting you ready for the bottom of the second inning. Great play to end that top half of the second inning. You see Michael Ogden getting it in the hole deep. And it's a bang bang play. You probably could have looked in replay probably four or five, six different times and they might not have had enough evidence to overturn whatever call it was had we had that sort of situation pop up, but first base umpire today is Nate Starr. He said that was a good out. And so we go to the bottom of the second with Sean Perez coming up, the designated hitter for the Barracudas. Great arm strength by Ogden and stretch by Lundano. Perez, Florida International commit. Gonna be a Golden Panther next year. Fouls that one back. Perez actually is just a junior. 358 on the season. Three home runs, three doubles, and a triple. 17 RBI. And takes the 0 and 2 low for a ball. He'll hit that one to Cruz. Up with it for the first out of the bottom of the second. Good pitch location by Coquit. Utilizing his breaking ball on the outside part of the plate, keeping the ball down. Perez couldn't do much with it. So now, Ryan Scary, the center fielder, is up to bat for the Barracudas. Scary hitting 184 in 22 games played this year. That scored 13 runs, though. And takes that 0 1 for a ball. And the count will even at 1 1. Swing and a miss on that one. One and two. The sophomore, 13 strikeouts on the season. To nine walks drawn. He's been hit by a pitch four times. Very typical for these Barracuda batters to look fooled hitting against Colquitt because his ball has so much movement, which starts off as a strike, may very well end up outside the strike zone. And that one just misses the outside part of the plate. And the count will even up now at two and two. Foul ball off to our right.
Timber Creek with a run in the top half of the second. And now the count will run full to Scary. Nice work behind the plate by Hawkins. Have to be a mobile catcher when you catch a breaking baller by Colquitt. And Scary will give that one a ride to right center. And there up with it is Shadi Farah for the second out of the inning. Great first step on a diagonal run for Shadi Farah. Ball hung a bit. Virtually no win right now. Flags are dead for the most part, except for a few gusts. So if I do say so, it looks like we are transitioning to that afternoon sea breeze I thought we'd get. Expect for that wind to kind of turn around from behind now towards the west where it might shovel everything back towards left center. And even help some things hit out to right. Count to Acevedo, 1-0. The Eastern Connecticut commit going to join the second baseman, Brent Koskiwella. And Acevedo hitting 327 on the season, two home runs, 17 RBI. Pulls that one towards the third baseman, Fenwick, up with it. Nice throw all the way across the diamond. And down go the Barracudas in order in the home half of the second. We'll head to the top of the third. Your score is still the Timber Creek Wolves one. Coral Reef Barracudas nothing. We'll be right back on the NFHS Network. Wolves get one in the top half of the second. There you see Timber Creek's dugout. Third straight appearance for the Wolves. And we're here in 2015 as well. So make that four in the last five years where they've gotten to the state semis. Very, very impressive. They've already gone through the batting order once. And it'll be the leadoff hitter, Ramses Cordova, who singled his first time on the first pitch of the ball game and his first at bat. Roth made an instant adjustment, pitched him outside and off the plate after that first at bat. And Cordova slices that one, and it'll get foul. He got good bat on that one. Cordova clearly can cover the inside part of the batting zone. I expect Roth to stay down and away from him. And that one catches the outside part of the plate. And it'll be a one and two count now to Cordova, who will pull that one to the third baseman. Up with it is Acevedo, who pulls his... Man Ladono off the base, and that will go down as an E5. That has to be frustrating for Roth. 
outside breaking ball. Cordova tries to pull it and does exactly what you do with a pull pitch of that nature. Grounds right to the third baseman, but can't throw him out. That'll bring up Cole Nelson, who sacrificed runner over his first time. Good looking pickoff move by Patrick Roth. And that bunt will go quickly to Roth. And it'll be good for the second sacrifice of the game for Nelson. Thought Roth had he pivoted to the third base side and delivered a strike. Had the lead runner, never looked at him, got the sure out of first. That brings up Parker Wood. First team All-Metro in the city of Orlando, an FACA All-State all player as well. Swing and a miss off the big cut right there for Wood. Roth will check the runner at second. That's Cordova on base for the second time today. And a nice bunt to the third base side. And we'll get the runner over. No play at third. And let's see. That one looked like it was going to be a hit all the way. And that's how they will score it. Best decision of the day for Acevedo. Already displayed some challenges, throwing the ball, charged two errors, held on to it. Runners at the corners. So in fact, runners are at the corners with one out for Spolier. He's got a lot of pop in that bat. Takes the first pitch up and inside. Roth with a high leg kick, not a hard thrower. Good characteristic to try to run on a pitcher as such. Offsets his mechanics with a great step off the rubber pickoff move. Should and be Spolier hits it right where they're not, and that will get Cordova home and stop the lead runner at second. Duran in right field, comes up the play, shows off a very accurate throw back into the infield. It will go down in the box score, and it will look like a line drive smash, flush hit. All he did was hit it to where they were not, and that's all you got to do, especially with ducks on the pond. And... Now a second run home. Chris Leone wants some time to talk about it with Roth. This has definitely been the plot in this final. Teams, innings one, innings two, having difficulty settling down on defense, having several miscues that have led to unearned runs, and then jumping on the back of their pitcher and trying to settle down and keep the game close until the offense comes around. So quick pep talk for Patrick Roth. One out for Barracudas. In the top half of the third. That pitch is low and inside, and the count will go to 1-0. and Timber Creek trying to face 
their neighbors to the north from just over the Seminole County line. If you go up Avalon Park Boulevard, hit 417, just south of the B line. They call it the beach line now. Out towards the airport. You head due north on 417, you'll run right into Sanford Seminole High School. As a matter of fact, these two teams have played this year already. Timber Creek owning that one eight to nothing. All the way back on the 20th of March. And that one gets right through the left side of the infield. And they'll wave the runner home. Throw to the plate is cut off. And that will get Parker Wood home. And two home in the top half of the third for a total of three runs for the Wolves. Ross not getting hit hard, but getting hit effectively. As you noted earlier, these Wolf players are simply hitting the ball where Barracuda defenders are not. So now the three, four, five hitters all one for two. And a check swing Should there be. by Farah. And just an absolute corker of a throw. We have a running, base running miscue here. Caught and, in the rundown. And the throw will come home. And there's the second out of the inning as they're going to get Spolier. But Acevedo kind of holding his arm. Almost like he's got a dead arm, shoulder. I know that feeling. He acted like that. He's a solid third baseman. Has made that throw thousands of times. And looked like he, it just never meant to be. He may have some health issues. Check swing roller to Acevedo. Just lifted his back leg. Really doesn't look comfortable throwing the ball at all. And he will come out. And he will be replaced by Jake Ogden. Good presence of mind by the Barracuda defense on the throwing error. Landano fielding the loose ball, immediately getting the ball back into the infield and giving the other defenders a chance to make the play at the plate. So Hawkins reaches on the air by Acevedo, and this is Shadi Farah, who has an RBI double. And the count will now run even at one and one to Farah. Ooh, and hit well. Farah hits that one well. And Ooh. a beautiful diving catch by the left fielder, Dylan Boyd. NFHS top 10 play right there. And so that will do it for the Wolves. The top half of the third, they lead after two and a half innings of play. Three to nothing over the Barracudas. We'll be right back after this message on the NFHS Network. NFHS Learning Center is the leader in online education for the interscholastic community. At NFHSLearn.com, you can find over 60 courses for coaches, administrators, officials, parents, students, and performing arts programs, including over 25 free courses such as concussion in sports, heat illness prevention, sudden cardiac arrest, and protecting students from abuse. For more information, visit the NFHS Learning Center. 
There you see a picture of Denton Coquit on for his third inning of work for the Wolves. And a beautiful play made by the left fielder Dylan Boyd to end the threat that the Wolves had going. Really laid out for it nicely. Got a great read and jump on the ball. That'll be a highlight for him the rest of his life. As we're gonna take a good look at it right there, just textbook dive and catch. A little styleification right there by Dylan Boyd. And that one hits Manny Duran on the elbow. Just got a piece of him. Dylan Boyd to be telling that story in 50 years about the time he laid out in left field in the state tournament. Great play. That'll be Sean Londono, the first baseman. Seven, eight, nine hitters up, due up for Coral Reef. The Barracudas can get a couple guys on. They'll have their best hitter in Jimenez leading off. He's in the hole right now. Quick check of the runner. Back with plenty of time, but Hawkins letting Duran know. I do have a cannon, or at least I'm gonna at least try to show you I've got a cannon. There and we go. The runner goes, hits it to where they ain't, and that'll be good for a base hit for the Kudas. And now they will have runners at first and second with nobody out. Roth, Colquitt, breaking ball pitches who hover around the strike zone. Both teams have a great opportunity to put a lot of balls in play today. And so now we'll see the left fielder, Dylan Boyd, who made that beautiful diving catch in left field to end the top half of the third. Hitting 273, just a couple of RBI on the season for Boyd. Boyd, just a sophomore. That's Duran out at second. Londano at first. And time was called, I believe. So Boyd will step back in and await the pitch from Coquit. Pop it up off the right oh. side. Spolier slipped and fell. That didn't look very comfortable either. Maybe a little more pride bruised than anything else, but that one might leave a mark of all things. That one may sting a little. Great example of when you're the secondary defended to make a play, to still close out on the play. Cruz, had he closed out harder from second, may have had a chance to back up Spolia there. So Coquit's pitch up the middle and underneath the glove of Cruz, and now we'll get one run home. And so now the Barracuda's on the board, courtesy of the RBI single by Dylan Boyd with no outs. What a turn of events in a situation that should have been first and second with one out. Quickly goes first and second, no outs, run on the board. And again, so far the theme has been hit it where they ain't. And even though the second baseman, Gabriel Cruz, was there, he had to make such a long run there's a good chance he was not even gonna get close to throwing Boyd out, which would have actually loaded the bases at that point. 
for your best hitter, Baza Jimenez. Sebastian Baza Jimenez, the FIU commit. He's a great athlete, plays catcher, is the leadoff hitter for this ball club and table setter. And Jimenez takes that one for a strike. Winner of this game gets Sanford Seminole on Saturday at 12.30. It's a slow chopper. Stepping on the base will be Fenwick to get the lead runner. And so now it'll be runners at first and second with one out for the Barracudas. And then as a catcher, still runs extremely well. That's 6'3", 197. Again, is a great athlete at that catcher position. Six three one ninety seven. That is absolutely perfect metrics for a wide receiver. Some like him a little taller. Some like him a little shorter and faster. But six three one ninety seven. No matter what the sport is, is an impressive frame. So Koskiwella, the second baseman, takes the pitch outside for a ball. Kudas with a run here in the bottom half of the third inning. Looking to tack on more. Koskiwella fouls that one off. And now the count will run even at one and one. Off attempt. Nicely done, but in time is the runner. Wind starting to shift now out of the west. It's going to be blowing towards center field. And that one is cracked back up the middle and will get a run home. The throw to the plate. Not in time. And the Kudas have their second run of the board on with just one out still. Nice job by Coscalella to take that ball right back up through the box. Gonna bring up the shortstop, Michael Ogden. Lined out to center field his last time up. And we'll get a meeting on the mound for Timber Creek. Pitch left out over the plate. Coscoella did exactly what a good hitter does, takes it right back up the middle. Gets another run on the board for the Barracudas. So Timber Creek jumped out to a quick 3-0 lead. And now Coral Reef fighting their way back. We've gotten two back in here in this bottom of the third. Fans for the Barracuda getting engaged in the second, third inning rally. Barracuda fans showing some heart. And yes, he went around on that attempt. He heard it foul off there for Ogden. The count will now run to 0-1. And 
that one is upstairs, and the count will even at one and one. We haven't seen many fastballs from Colquitt. And that one is fouled off. Runner was going on that. And Jimenez will go back to second base. Kudas have camped out at the plate here in the bottom of the third. So much so, Patrick Roth, starting pitcher, headed out to the bullpen to stay warm. And that one well behind the shortstop, Cordova. And that one way over the third baseman's head. Parker Wood threw that one about four rows deep into the dugout. And that will bring home Baza Jimenez and the tying run. Wolves playing Frisbee for a moment here. Unable to... Get the ball where it needs to be. And so now three runs home to tie this game up in the bottom of the third. Cordova, over, just a poor throw by Colquitt. Exacerbated by a poorer throw from Wood. Wood looked like he might have slipped and fell down, but it doesn't excuse the fact that you needed a drone to find that ball. Pressure situations do different things to different players, to different teams. We've witnessed questionable base running and below average fielding in the early innings of virtually every game here during this state final tournament. And Coquit misses outside, and the count will now run even at two and two to Ogden. Ogden fouls that one off down the line, and that looks like it will get all the way out of the stadium. Nope, bounces back in. And time. And that is, I mean, we've seen that more than a handful of times where time is granted while the pitcher is already in their windup. I don't think they understand how destructive that could be to the pitcher himself. And so very curious as to why they're granting that literal last second time to the batter. Almost a little gamesmanship, almost. He wasn't in the box that long, but needed to step out. Caught Coquit off balance. And that is outside. Full count now, three and two. Just one out, runner at third, and that one is high. And Ogden will walk. That'll bring up Sean Perez, who grounded out to the second baseman his last time up. Fourth time in the last five years, third year in a row for Timber Creek to get to this point. And they are the ones looking like They've got a little bit of nerves going through after jumping out to a 3-0 lead. Agreed. The walk to the previous batter could be a blessing or a curse. He can induce a ground ball here to get to and get out of this inning. Could be viewed as a positive walk. 
Perez steps in to Coquit. Ooh. And Perez hits that a mile, and that will go over Jake Johnson's head all the way to the wall. One run is in. Here comes the second run winding around third base. And that will be runs four and five in the bottom of the third for the Barracudas. Five to three lead now for Coral Reef. Ball left up in the zone. The pitch left up in the zone. Perez able to get a great swing and drive that ball 390 feet out the left center. So judging by the fact that Andrew Spolier is running in to grab a pitcher's mitt instead of the first base mitt, looks like we may see him. Let's get confirmation on that. As a matter of fact, we gil will get Andrew Spolier, the junior. So we may mention the fact that had they gotten to, and it was a big if, Spolier would have been the starter. So now we're playing catch up. And at this point, it's irrelevant as to who you're using. You just have to use them. Sure, no one feels any worse under current circumstances than Acevedo, third baseman who's been removed from this game. Still staying active, even though he went out with a shoulder injury, Yeah, was Acevedo. And so, spoiler, spoiler on the air. 53 innings pitch, 66 strikeouts to 13 walks. Has given up a home run. 2.11 ERA, 6-1 record. 13 games appeared. Pony hitting three or 209, excuse me, against him. Three wild pitches. And has hit three batters. And Dylan Stanley will go in at first. And first pitch is over from Spolier. is hit down the right field line. Let's see if it gets down. And it fair is ball. fair ball. And gets away from Farah. And that will get a run home. A triple of steps to spare. Perfect placement. And that shot up the first base line. Fair by inches. So scary with the triple. Unless they gave him a double and an error to third. RBI nonetheless. And that one is quickly up and with it and safe. 
Beautiful squeeze play by the Cooters. When it rains, it pours. Floodgates are officially open. And that'll bring up Manny Duran. The pitch by Spolier. Runs to the first base side. The decision by Spolia to catch, to field, and throw cost him that out. Probably had to barehand it all in one motion. This will be Manny Duran, who was hit by a pitch his first time up. And that one is through the hole on the left side. And Duran is on with a single. And now runners at first and second. Still only one out. And seven runs in for Coral Reef at the moment. The bleeding continues for the Wolves. Keep in mind, this is the fourth out of the last five years. Timber Creek has made it to the semis and they were state champs in 2017 and in the state title game last year. Londano singled his last time up. And that one dribbled up having a little fight with the sun is Cruz but he will retire Londono. So to bring up the left fielder, Dylan Boyd, who had an RBI single his first time at bat. Spolia, like his right-handed teammate, Coquit, they're both control pitches. Not big strikeout guys or pitches that overpower you. Allows you to put the ball in play and get some good swings. Pitch misses inside for ball one to Boyd. And that pitch misses low. Ball two. Two and oh now to Dylan Boyd. And a nice attempt, almost getting the runner at second. The ball beat him back to the bag. Close call, very close. Nice spin and fire on the mound for Spolier. That's not, a, that's not an easy move to make. Sure, if you want to practice it 2,000 times it might be, but still. Not an easy move to make in a state semifinal when you're trying to stop the bleeding and there's a risk of you overthrowing the second baseman and leading to the sixth, eighth run of the inning. And that one will get popped up and get out of play towards our truck over on the right side. Another pickoff attempt. Very, very close. The thing that may be of benefit to Ryan Scary out there on second base, the runner, is that dude's got some pretty long legs. Like he's got he's all arms and legs. Yes, so with that extra little reach, he's beaten that throw back. It might not behoove them to throw it back anymore. Just concentrate on the hitter, as you can see. 
you lose the hitter on this one, you're going to load the bases. So now the count is full, three and two with two outs here in the bottom of the third. Seven runs in for the Barracudas. Extra base hit here. Surely will drive home two with runners running on the pitch. Three two payoff is fouled off by Boyd. Boyd, the number nine hitter. Spoyer looks in, gets the sign, and will deal. And yet another foul ball off the right side, headed towards our truck, but stays in the park. Good at bat here by Boyd, really making Spoyer work. And a swing and a miss for Boyd. Nice battle there. But not until the damage has been done. Seven runs in the bottom of the third for the Barracudas. They will lead, headed to the top of the fourth over Timber Creek, seven to three. We'll be right back after this quick word on the NFHS Network. This championship event is brought to you by Hospital for Special Surgery. Thousands of young athletes have their season ended by ACL injuries. Learn how to keep them safe with our ACL injury prevention course at nfhslearn.com slash courses. All right, this is Adam, take two. Mark. I guess. <laughs> I go like this. <laughs> The best part about playing football in Texas has to be the reaction from the community. I want to encourage others to play volleyball or choir because you get to experience new things and do stuff that you've never done before. My reason why is passion. My reason why is pride. Kudas get a touchdown in the bottom of the third. And so. Even though we are referencing the wrong sport, not too many times you can see a seven spot put up. And that is a very, very active score line to say the least. Seven runs, six hits, three errors for Barracudas. Three runs, five hits, two errors for the Wolves. And so we've got ourselves a bit of controlled chaos on our hands. New Leading life for Roth. He's ahead now, four runs. He can go back to his original game plan. Leading off in the top of the fourth, Alexander Fenwick. Grounded into a 1-6 double play his last time up. Fenwick will take ball two, two and oh now. And that pitch is hit to the third baseman, Ogden up with it, and one down here in the top of the fourth. Nice job by Ogden to keep the glove down, regained his footing, delivered a strike across the diamond. Yeah. 
So Gabriel Cruz now fouls that one off. Cruz grounded out to the shortstop his first time up. Timber Creek. And that one is a grounder to Ogden. And good for the second out. The Ogden brothers controlling the left side of the defense right now. Timber Creek defeated Winter Park in the district final then had to play Ridge Community over in Osceola County, Davenport, then defeated Kissimmee Osceola by forfeit. Kissimmee Osceola not following the rules. Had to give up the ghost on that one. And then defeated Vero Beach at Vero Beach, which is a huge road win for the Wolves. It is no easy task to go down to Vero and do anything, regardless of the sport. And that's a bellwether program in our state. So the Wolves in their fourth semifinal in the last fifth year, five years going for their second title in the last three years, find themselves in a pretty big hole to the Barracudas. And that one ripped foul. Count will run at two and two. Deuce is wild, two balls, two strikes, two outs. This is Cordova, Ramsey's Cordova, reached on an error by the third baseman last time, singled his first time up. And just gets a piece of that one. Good pitch by Roth. Keeping Cordova off balance, working east and west in that strike zone. And Cordova gets a nice little wood that might drop, but a well done by Dylan Boyd. And that will do it for the Wolves in the top half of the fourth inning. So a quick work by Patrick Roth and his Barracudas leading 7-3 as we head to the bottom of the fourth. We'll be right back after this quick word on the NFHS Network. This event is brought to you by Champion. Since 1919, Champion has created the durable, authentic sportswear you need to conquer your goals. As the official uniform and apparel provider for the NFHS, Champion helps athletes at every level make their mark, the mark of a champion. View our apparel today at champion.com. You see a picture of Old Glory, smack dab in the middle with our awesome state flag to the left. Those flags were flush mere minutes ago coming from the west. They've been blowing from right to left since last week and the majority of this week. Now that sea breeze, the way you see them blowing from, that's directly off the Gulf of Mexico coming in. And so we do have ourselves a sea breeze developing. And a little more humid than yesterday and just as surface of the sun hot as it's been for essentially the entire month of May. And so this will be Sebastian Baza Jimenez, the FIU commit, the catcher. Takes a ball outside from Spoyer in his second inning of work. And 
he'll push that one foul and out of the play. That one gets out of the stadium. Shortstop and second baseman both playing deep in the hole. Lots of room up the box for Jimenez. And he turned with the quickness on that inside pitch from Spoyer. And count remains at one and two. Well, aside from the long reach that Jimenez has, he hovers over the plate. Case in point, that pitch was a full foot and a half off the plate, and Jimenez could have easily reached out and slapped that one to right field. He has a very long reach, and he's, like you said, right on top of that plate. If anything, if he backs off the plate right there on that inside pitch, that actually straightens out for him a little bit. He yanked that one foul. But you don't want to change what is working, even though he's 0 for 2 with a run scored today. Everything coming up aces for the FIU commit. And he pops that one up down the right side, looking like it'll hit the berm on the right field line, and will do so. A couple of youngins on the case quickly and showing off the bounty, the discovery. The one little kid rocking a sweet Milwaukee Brewers hat. Old school MB. Two and two to Jimenez. He rips that one in the left field. And Johnson will come up with it. As Jimenez makes the turn and will stay at first. And now that will bring up Brent Coscuela. He's one for two with an RBI single in his last at bat. Struck out his first time. Good at bat by Jimenez. Fouled off the pitches that he really couldn't do what he wanted with. Got something up in the strike zone. Was able to pull it out to left field for a single. He's an athlete. Has great legs. He's a threat to run at first base as well. Four or five step lead now. And a little bit more than just a bunt on that one. And just beats Coscuela. Bang, bang goes the trolley. And how quick that one was. Very close to Ty being the runner, but it gets Jimenez over to second now with just one out. Barracuda is able to play solid, fundamental baseball, advancing runners fundamentally. Looking to capitalize and drive guys home the old-fashioned way. Here is Michael Ogden, the shortstop, the junior. Ogden is 0 for 1, lined out to center field, first time walked, second at bat. Fouls that one back. And pickoff, this time it's got him, but they're going to have to make a great throw down at third. And they do. And they will get Basa Jimenez, the lead runner. A super huge out for the Wolves. Cannot afford to give up another run in this game, already down four. And a bunt by Ogden. No play whatsoever for Spolier. Third baseman, Alexander Fenwick, was way back on that one. Nice call, nice adjustment by the Barracuda hitter. Surprising base running error by Jimenez. Up four runs, no need to be careless. 
Nonetheless, Coscarella, excuse me, Ogden picks up his slack, gets on base. And Sean Perez, who hit a two RBI, double his last time. And that one is in for a strike. Barely misses on the outside part of the plate. One and one. Great frame by Hawkins. Still could not get the call. Yeah, swing and a miss right there in the count. Now runs to one and two on Perez. Spoyer needing a huge out right here. Runner goes, and throw down, and beautiful throw, catch and tag, and that will send the Barracudas down after no runs on the board. We've played full four innings here in Fort Myers, Coral Reef seven, Timber Creek three, we'll be right back. You're watching the 9A semifinal on the NFHS Network. You see some folks from Southeast Orlando. Bob Buckridge right there in the middle of your screen in the white shirt, that's the head football coach. Timber Creek supporting the baseball boys. And the Wolves in a bit of a hole, needing a spark right now. Cole Nelson, two sacrifices on the day. Working against Patrick Roth, who had a clean first inning. Bit of a rocky road, second and third, and then a clean fourth inning. And this is there, and the count is at one and one. Misses two and one. So quickly now, Nelson has worked the count in his favor, three and one. Fouls that one, and the count will now run full at three and two. And ball four, and Nelson is on with a walk. Not a good walk for Roth. You gotta throw that over for a strike or allow your defense to make a play. 
You're up four runs. You don't want to start the grill <coughs> by giving guys free passes. Here's Parker Wood, center fielder. Wood had an infield hit his last time up. One for two in the game. Reached on an error by the first baseman his first time up. That one upstairs. This is high and outside, and the count evens up at two and two. Checks the runner at first, nothing doing. And the lefty will get back on the rubber. And concentrate on Wood. Could Who be hits two. One, six, four, three. And they actually call him safe. Wood beating the throw to the bag. Slow roller to short. Ogden may have been better benefited charging the ball. Great job by Wood to leg it out, though. See if we can see how close this really was. In real time, it looked bang bang. There's the six, there's the four. And it was bang bang. Coscoello using a sidestep to avoid contact. Probably the difference between throwing the runner out and the runner being safe. So here's Foyer now with one out and one on. He laces that one to the second baseman, and this will be an easy double play. And just like that, the Wolves go down in the top of the fifth inning. So, it'll be the Barracudas coming up. Four, five, and six due up for Coral Reef when we return to Hammond Stadium after this quick break on the NFHS Network. NFHS Learning Center is the leader in online education for the interscholastic community. At NFHSLearn.com, you can find over 60 courses for coaches, administrators, officials, parents, students, and performing arts programs, including over 25 free courses such as concussion in sports, heat illness prevention, sudden cardiac arrest, and protecting students from abuse. For more information, visit the NFHS Learning Center. confirmation that we are at the spring training home of the Minnesota Twins. The best record in baseball. Technically not the hottest team in baseball. That belongs to the Oakland A's. But Minnesota absolutely mashing at the plate. Getting good pitching this year. The Twins looking to dethrone the Cleveland Indians in that AL Central. And Back to the topic at hand, Sean Perez, who was at the plate when Michael Ogden was thrown out. And so Perez will pick up where he left off, but with a new count at 1-0 oh now. Swing and miss, believing the count at 1-1. One
pitch will miss for ball two. And that one gets through the left side for Perez. And he's on with a base hit. Good piece of hitting. Pulled a pitch down and inside, right through the hole on that left side. You don't have to hit it hard. You have to hit it where the defense isn't. Now, if you're Dowdy from Plant City, he likes to hit hard and far. Pinch running now is Alonzo Santamaria. That one will get out of play. This is Ryan Scary, who had an RBI triple in his last at bat. Another fan grabs a souvenir. comes low and inside to Scary. And the count will even up at one and one. And Scary will chop that one back up, fielding it is Spolier. Nicely done by the left-handed pitcher. Good footwork, good catch, pivot, throw. That's ball you. And so Jake Ogden, who reached on with a squeeze bunt, and it led to a run scored, an RBI. For the young man who came on in replacement of Thomas Acevedo, who hurt his shoulder the first inning. And he's come in and filled in admirably with an RBI as well as a nice play in the field. By all standards, an upgrade substitution for this Barracuda ball club. has been working on that pickoff move to second. There he goes. Runner goes. And, and he's, he's out by a mile. Out by a country mile. Hawkins has a gun behind that plate. I mean, at some point, your pride has to be swallowed. If you've got a cannon behind the plate, Stop running yourself out of, out of runs. Running yourself right off the base pass. And Coral Reef, not the only team to have experienced a catcher with the arm quality of Hawkins. Again, baseball is a thinking man's sport, which by very nature means you can overthink this by a country mile sometimes. And when you've got a runner on, hot bat up to plate, and a chance to tack on one more, there's no reason to grab an extra base. And there's an arm cannon behind the dish for your backstop. And that one swung on and missed, and that will do it for the Barracudas in the bottom of the fifth. Timber Creek running out of time, trailing seven to three. We'll be right back after this quick break on the NFHS Network. 
This championship event is brought to you by Hospital for Special Surgery. Thousands of young athletes have their season ended by ACL injuries. Learn how to keep them safe with our ACL injury prevention course at nfhslearn.com slash courses. All right, this is Adam, take two. Mark. I guess. <laughs> I go like this. <laughs> The best part about playing football in Texas has to be the reaction from the community. I want to encourage others to play volleyball or choir because you get to experience new things and do stuff that you've never done before. My reason why is passion. My reason why is pride. Hey, get a look at the Timber Creek dugout, the Wolves. Second time in three years, three times in four years. If they've been at this spot. Just a fantastic run for this Timber Creek team out of Southeast Orlando, but they have run up against a buzzsaw. In that third inning, they gave up seven runs where the bottom just absolutely fell out. And they had to take starter Coquit out and so, a couple of ill-timed double plays as well. And now that'll bring up Jake Johnson, who will lead off this top of the six. Timber Creek down to their final six outs. Johnson, RBI single his last time at bat. That one misses outside, and quickly now. Johnson ahead, three and one. And that one is in, ball four. And so Jake Johnson is on with a leadoff walk. I'll bring up Ethan Hawkins, who reached on an error by the third baseman. Last two innings, Roth has walked the leadoff batter. Hawkins has been a one-man wrecking crew from his defensive position at the catching spot today. Trying to do the same from the dish. Reminds me of Philly catcher Real Mute with his ability to throw out runners. Real Muto. Apologizing that pronunciation. Swing and a miss by Hawkins, and he will have a seat. Great off-speed pitch there by Roth, off the plate. Great location with a late break. So that'll bring up Shadi Farah, who RBI doubled his first time up, then lined out to left field his last at bat. And that one will get out of play. Strike one. Go, go, go. Misses low in the dirt. Good stop there by Jimenez. And the count will even at one and one. Got him. 
And they've got Johnson in the rundown. And that will be the second out of the inning. And so now all of a sudden, you see Farah kind of slam his back down a little bit as if to say thanks a lot. Because now I'm facing a one and one count with two outs. And I've only got one more at bat for my team coming up in the seventh inning. So it gets from bad to worse for Timber Creek right there. And right there, that could have helped the situation immensely. And instead, it's merely a two out single and one on. Barracuda's kind of dodging a bullet there. It's been that kind of day for the Wolves. But we saw this same paradigm in the game before with Allen pitching, got down early due to some questionable fielding. His team kept him in it, regained the lead, won that ball game. We're off in the same predicament. And Fenwick will ground to the third baseman. So Timber Creek, nothing doing. We head to the home half of the sixth. Kuda's in control, seven to three. We'll be right back after this quick break. This event is brought to you by Champion. Since 1919, Champion has created the durable, authentic sportswear you need to conquer your goals. As the official uniform and apparel provider for the NFHS, Champion helps athletes at every level make their mark, the mark of a champion. View our apparel today at champion.com. Gorgeous shot looking out over center field over at the Six Mile Cypress Swamp, they call it. On the outskirts of our fence there, the Hammond Stadium. Beyond that, you're looking northeast. The wind switching out of the west now. Gulf of Mexico behind you on your screen. And the wind's starting to shift off there and a little more clouds starting. If anything, they're providing some much needed shade in some spots. Then again, it's a quintessential late May day here in Southwest Florida, regardless of whatever reading we have, whether it be temp, humidity, wind, what have you. It's hot down on the field. The bats have been hot for Coral Reef, if you're speaking of the third inning, that is. All zeros, except for one lone inning where they put a seven spot on the board to take firm control of this game. And for it, looking in the catbird seat to face Sanford Seminoles Saturday at 12.30. Line shot through the left side of the infield for Duran. And Duran is two for two on the afternoon. Now to bring up Sean Landano. That one misses. Hawkins, heat check. And that one bunted foul. Runner 
on first, no outs. Spolier to work. And that one popped way up on the bunt attempt. Misses for a strike, and we'll now even the count at two and two. And that will send Londano down. Good pitch by Spolia. Hard, biting, low in the strike zone. in there for a strike. And they say he held off. Count will even at one and one. went in for a strike. Now we'll run one and two now. And that one just misses. And the count. We'll run even at two and two. Three and two now, the count for Spoyer working on Dylan Boyd, the left fielder. Boyd one for two with a strikeout. And that one into center field. And a nice run down there by Parker Wood for the second out. Great jump on contact. shot and just eats up the third baseman Alexander Fenwick and quick throw but nicely done backing up the throw there as Spoyer to prevent any further damage Fenwick frozen had the opportunity to slide towards the line and knock the ball down tried to backhand it ball ate him up When you talk about third baseman, you know, one of the big things that you have to be is fearless because the ball gets to you really, really quickly. So your hand-eye coordination and your first step ability is really important at that hot corner. Brent Coscuella. He was one for three with a sacrifice his last time up. 
Had an RBI single his second time up. And that one just misses two and one for Spoyer. Working on Coscuela. The count is now three and one. Dangerous situation here for Spolier. You want to keep this lead at four. A single here could really take the air out of your ball club. And that one misses outside. And Cascuela will draw the walk. Well, I'll bring up the shortstop, Michael Ogden. That one inside out swing, foul down the right field line. 0 and 1. Ogden 1 for 2 in the afternoon. Wanted himself on the last time. He has a huge gap between the center fielder and the left fielder. If he can pull a pitch. That right field gap is nothing to shake out either. Great opportunity to put this game potentially out of reach. Spolier, the two one to Ogden. Fouled that one back and the count will even up at two and two. Deuces wild, two balls, two strikes, two outs. a line shot to the shortstop, Cordova, who will get it over to Cruz. It will make the force out. And nothing doing that time for the Kudas. Last three outs for the Wolves. And we come right back after this quick break on the NFHS Network.
Wolves down to their final three outs. It's been a dynastic run for Timber Creek in the Orlando area. Really and truly no other team doing it better than they have in the last four years. But it will be bittersweet at best if they can't mount themselves a rally and face Sanford Seminole, who they've already beaten this season. And their neighbors to the north from Seminole County. Right now, Coral Reef in the driver's seat. And Patrick Roth coming out to attempt the complete game. Gabriel Cruz, second baseman up to bat, takes the first pitch for a strike. Roth has stayed around the plate the majority of the day. And that one is fouled off. He does have three walks. But again, a control pitcher. He's done a wonderful job hitting spots, changing eye levels. And, and he gets Roth. And not in time, and so the Wolves get the leadoff runner on first base. Couldn't make the play there. And they're going to give the error to the pitcher there. And so that'll bring up Ramsey's Cordova. The shortstop, Cordova, one for three. Singled his first time at bat. Reached on an error by the third baseman his second time and then flied out to left field in his last at bat. Does have a run scored on the afternoon. And a rather nonchalant throw over. Feet buried in concrete there by Roth. Four run lead, I'm focused on the batter. Hit hard. And that one. Sky high, the wind trying to carry that one, and it does over Duran's head. And that will get the runners to second and third. Told you now, that wind has shifted, and everything hit to right field is going to get helped by the sea breeze. One of the best things you can do as an outfielder upon contact is you want to get to this projected spot where you expect the ball to land and then be able to work yourself into the field. Duran backpedaling, didn't make a clean turn, stumbled a bit, and had to battle a sun. Not an easy play on a day like today. Ball was hit a ton. As you see his footwork there, his back pedaling gets turned around. Can't make the basket catch. And they'll give Cordova a hit on that one. So Timber Creek, runners at second and third. Nobody out. Again for Roth, I'm focused on the batter. I have a four run lead. Swing and a miss there by Cole Nelson, who has sacrificed his first two times and then walked his last at bat. Pitch from Roth is upstairs. If you're raw with your goal right now is to make sure that the tying run does not get a chance to make it to the plate. And that one is laced down left field. Let's see if it'll get foul, and it is. Looked fair from our angle up here until it got a little bit farther down the line. And the count will even up at two and two. And 
and that one squirts away from Jimenez. No harm, no foul, though. And the count will run full at three and two to Cole Nelson. If Roth doesn't get this batter, I have to believe that help may be on the way in the form of relief. And we'll foul that one out of play on the right side. And that one hits him in the left shoulder. And now, the tying run will come to the plate. Parker Wood. Parker Wood with one home run on the season. 17 RBI. Chris Leone, slow clap on the way out. And that'll be it for Roth. And we will check the number on the pitcher. It's like number four, Nikki Garcia. He's coming into play. So this will be Michael Ogden who is now pitching. Nikki Garcia, number four, entered the game. We'll see where he went. He'll go take the place of Michael Ogden, who left shortstop. Well, if you're Parker Wood or Spolier, your next two batters, these are the scenarios that you have dreams about growing up, Doug. Down four, bottom of the seventh or top of the seventh. Ogden with an 8.4 ERA. 0-0 record, 1.2 innings pitched. Two hits, two runs, both of them earned. Struck out one, walked one, and has given up a home run. Every athlete's dream is to come through in a big way during a clutch situation. It doesn't get any more clutch than this. So Parker Wood with a chance to absolutely live a dream sequence here. He is the leading run, or excuse me, the tying run. And that one is in the dirt. Wood has lots of room up both left and right field lines. Fouls that one off. And swing and a miss right there. Just a protection swing right there. Not a very good at bat whatsoever for Parker Wood. Parker Wood swung at two would be balls. The moment just a little bit bigger than him. So Wood bailing Ogden out. And so Spolier will come up with one out. Bases full of Wolves. That one low and inside, ball one. Yeah. 
And that one is a line shot. And now quickly two down. That could have been disaster right there. And so now the Barracuda fans will rise to their feet in anticipation. First time ever for the Barracudas in school history to get to this point. And right now, sitting pretty. And that one will get out of play towards our truck. Johnson late on a fastball. That one misses. Low and outside, now the count will run at one, two. To Jake Johnson. Johnson just needs a single to keep the rally going. That one high, and the count will now run. Deuces wild, two balls, two strikes, two outs. Very close to hitting him on the left arm, on the bicep. Timber Creek fans employing, imploring their team on. Runners go, and that one hits him. And so a run will come in. Ogden really flirting with danger here. That'll bring up Ethan Hawkins, the catcher. Walked, reached on an error by the third baseman, and struck out is his afternoon resume. So now, the winning run is at the plate for TC. Tying run at first. Two down. Next out will send Coral Reef to the finals on Saturday. Hawkins missed a great first pitch fastball that he could have driven. So we'll get a pinch runner. Javier Crespo in to run. The would be tying run. That one misses outside. Baza Jimenez, the catcher, telling Ogden, that was a good pitch. That's right where I wanted it. Don't worry about that. Now we'll leave it at one. And now Ogden is ahead, one and two on Hawkins. And that one misses close. Deuce is wild. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. That one misses high and outside, three and two. Count is full, top of the seventh. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Bases loaded for Ethan Hawkins. Is there a legend to be made? We'll foul that one off. Big cut right there by Hawkins. Fouls it off. Runners take off. And that one has hit a ton. But under it is scary. And that will do it. Ooh, 
Barracuda. They advance to the state championship game over the dynasty that is Timber Creek, seven to four. For the guys out in the truck, for the guys behind the camera, and for Jason Alexander beside me here in the booth, I'm Doug Pugh saying so long everybody, stick around. We've got the 5A state championship coming up at four o'clock. Have a great afternoon, everyone.